Master the Meeple, a channel all about... Board games. And Board gamey things. Exactly. My name is Jamie. I'm Jeff. <laughs> so quick. I'm Jeff. We're here today to do our July board game wrap-up to talk about all the games that we played in the month of July. I wish they could see the stack of games around us. But it's secrets and secret secrets. I don't know, fun. Secret secrets. Hurt someone. Sometimes they're necessary in videos like this. This is our first video recording on our new camera. I don't know whether it's going to be good or bad because we're just testing it out. Here's to hoping. Here's to hoping. So in the month of July, we played a ton of games. I should have counted. Hold on. Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven different. This games. is her. Shut your mouth, finger. Can you sh shut your mouth? Shut your mouth. So we played a total of thirty-seven games. We are going to talk a little bit about each game and try to not talk a ton about each game because that would make this video be forever. Yeah, long. sometimes I get too chatty. That's okay. I just Every time that we do this, Jamie's like, "Can you shut up more, please?" Everybody's gonna think that I'm just telling you to shut up constantly. It do be facts though. It do not be facts though. Are you ready? Yep. The first game that we played in the month of July was. Istanbul. Istanbul. By AEG. By AEG. Who designed it, Jeffrey? It is designed by Rudiger Dorn. Neat. Istanbul is a pick up and deliver game. You are picking essentially up picking up and delivering stuff. You're like a merchant and you're ripping around to all these spaces, picking up stuff with at the end bizarre. goal of like, yeah, at a bazaar. How bizarre. How bizarre. How bizarre. How bizarre. <laughs> End goal being to collect rubies, I think. I think. We played it one time. We played it once. And of those one time, of that one time, I won. Yeah, you did. What did you think about it, though? It was good. I should mention, like, yeah, you have your little merchant character, but you also have, like, a bunch of assistants that you're kind of, like, sending out to the city different little sections. They're like your family members. Yeah, something like that. You're kind of like manipulating your family around and you can't kind of like intersect with the other player. There's certain like Rules. unique kind of movement abilities that happen. But yeah, it was one of our first pick up and deliver games. We haven't played a ton of them, but I don't know that we've played any. this was on our shelf of opportunity, shelf of shame, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it. So we wanted to get it played. That yeah. is Istanbul. Istanbul. And we'll just skip over it quickly because Jamie won. But I do believe it was very close. What? No, close, I right? won. No, I know you won, but it was close, wasn't it? Probably uh, not. I don't believe that. Probably not. Next up, we have Welcome To. We do not have a physical copy of Welcome To no. because we strictly play this game on BGA. I keep looking at the Stop the looking at the I know, screen. I can't help it. I just like looking at myself. If you see Jeff looking off into the distance, it's I'm just staring at I'm just literally himself. staring at myself. Yeah. Well, next game that we played is Welcome To. Welcome To. I don't know who it's by, but I'll put all the stuff... In below. In below. In the below tagline. We played Welcome to a total of nine times. Makes sense. Of those nine times, we played five with the Table Knots crew. So I'm, instead of just saying, like, we played with Max, we played with whoever, yeah. Table Knots crew includes Max, Danielle, Doolin, and Jash. So any combination of them. Any combination. Could be who we're of that, referring that to. that crew. So we played five times with the Table Knots crew, and once we have an ongoing async game with yep. our discord yeah. friends yeah so we currently have one of those going on which i'm pretty sure it's my turn because i don't think that i yeah did we my held turn up you told we me. held up the game yeah. all day yesterday it was only me and i you. don't even think that i took my turn last night when you told me i can't remember i didn't take my turn till this morning one second i should check we're painting we'd be painting we'd be painting guys sorry yep it's my turn and I've taken my turn, it everybody. It's your turn now. So, so now up. you can't complain. Welcome to a total of nine times. Yeah. Of those I nine times, I, did well. I won four times and Jeff won twice. Yeah. Max won once. Jash won once. And, and he was sandbagging us. Yeah. Jash played with <laughs> us and he's like, I don't know how to play this game and ended up crushing us. And I realized that doesn't total up to nine. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So the nine... Time is the one with the Discord, obviously. Yes. But that hasn't ended yet. The first one did. First I can't one remember did. who won. Doesn't it was not happen. any of us. Oh, I think it might have been John Hedberg. Oh, Johnny Boy. Yeah. Old Johnny, Bo jo old Johnny Hedberg. Welcome to is a flip and write game. We play this game on BGA. This is like one of our four go-to games on BGA. Mm -hmm. I think that I prefer, I would prefer it on BGA. I don't think I'll ever buy a physical copy. Yeah, I don't know. Although it's just, it's... The physical copies come with like themes, so there's like a Halloween theme and a Christmas no, theme, and no, I kind of it's am not into necessarily that. not necessary. It's not necessarily. Shut don't up. worry about it. That is Welcome to. Do you have anything else to say about Welcome nope, to? We uh, talk about it every month. Very fun game. Very fun game. Much enjoyed. I do those roll and write games or flip and write play so well on BGA. Yeah. There's no pencil. There's no paper. There's no anything. It's there's just... nothing. So the next game that we played. 
in the month of July was not this game, but it's kind of like this game. Sushi Go. Non-party version. Non-party version. So we played Sushi Go a total of six times. We played, of those six times, we played twice at the Boardroom Game Cafe, and right. the rest were all on BGA. BGA. Yep. And we only played with each other. So of those six times, I won three times and Jeff won three times. That's surprising to me. That's even Stevens, as we like to call it. I do think you're better at that game than me. Thank you. I know. Sushi Go is from Game Rate and is designed by Phil Walker Harding. Yeah. So Great we game. just recently bought Sushi Go Party, which I'm very excited to try because it comes with many more adorable sushi pieces. And for anybody who doesn't know, Sushi Go is a card drafting set collection game where you're drafting a little cute adorable sushi. In Jeff's case, it's a wasabi. And then you're passing your hand over to the next person. They're taking one and you're trying to get as many points as possible. I play that game as in how many cute wasabis can I get? He takes a wasabi every time it comes up. No way I'm not taking that cute little bugger. It doesn't even score points. Can't skip them. Yeah. Needs to be in my family. I'm pretty good at that game. You are. You're very good at those little quick card hitter games, like, but you're not very good at Silver Bullet, so. I guess that we'll find out what the stats say. Stop looking. <laughs> Next game that we played was another one that we played strictly on BGA. That is a lot of I times. think this is our most, oh, no, I lied. This is our second most played game of the month, and that is Draftosaurus. We played that 15 times. Of those 15 times, we played 13 times with the table not screw. That's so fair. So this is yeah. one of our core four games. Mm -hmm. We played this one all the time. It takes like five minutes to play. It's a dinosaur drafting game, very much so like Sushi Go, only you're drafting dino meeples and you're placing them in your little dino park, and there's mm -hmm. some like restrictions that come up. And We played a bit of just the original base Draftosaurus yeah. and we played a few games with the winter expansion mm -hmm. which adds an additional round in different pens. Yeah, we uh, love Draftosaurus. Pens. I Jeff loves love Draftosaurus. Draftosaurus. Of those 15 times, Jeff won seven times. I won three times. Max won four times, Jash won once, and Danielle won once. And here's Jeff complaining all month because he never wins games. I on do PGA. think I am good at Draftosaurus. That I I don't think I'm very good at many games, but that is one I think I'm good at. And the stats don't lie. Stats don't lie. Table knots crew. Next time he starts complaining that he hasn't been winning BGA games. Let's all Listen, just remember. You can all you can all yammer on and, and try to guilt me into complaining about how many games I lost. There was like a week where I won zero games of like 30. So that complaint was justified. I, I was... guess we'll just keep reading the stats and we'll see. Ugh. Shall we? I'm not looking at you. Okay. Next game that we played in the month of July was... King Domino. King Domino. We Blue did Orange not... Games. Oh, I lied. Never mind. I was going to say we didn't play the physical copy, but we did. Bruno Cathala. King Domino, we've talked about a million times at this point. It is a tile drafting, tile placement game mm -hmm. that we absolutely we love. Um, we have physical copy. We also play on BGA with the Table Knots guys a ton. You're basically drafting a tile for your little kingdom. The tiles need to match. You scrap. You score those tiles wow. based on how many crowns are on them, Scrap. times the amount of <laughs> tile. Ah! <laughs> That's King Domino. Jamie's annoying me this video. No, I'm not. So we played King Domino a total of 17 times. So this is our most played game of the month. Mm -hmm. Of those 17, we played 11 with the Table Knots crew. We played two with Jeff's friends Dan Sequira and Dan Washburn, mm -hmm. and we played. Three times with Jeff's mom when she came to visit. Gina we played Ann. three times with mom? Yep. Yeah. Oh. She loved it. She did. This is another one of our core four, just so you know, on yep. BGA that we play with table knots. Of those 17 times, I won five times. Jeff won five times. Max won four times. Dan Washburn won once. We don't know how. Did Sequira won once. And your mom won once. She won her very first game. Good for them. Yeah, that makes me happy. That makes me happy too. But we love this game. Yeah, I so mean, good. It's probably going to show up in every wrap up. All right, next up, we played Vidiculture. Vidiculture, according <laughs> to Mac. Vidiculture. Vidiculture from Stonemeyer Games, designed by Jamie Stagmeyer. We played this one time on BGA with Max and Danielle. We did attempt a second one with Max, Danielle, and Jash. Yeah. 
But it was like midnight. We're like, oh, let's play Viticulture. <laughs> It'll only take an half an hour. And it was like 1230. And we're like, we need to go to bed. I now. think Danielle was falling asleep. Yeah. I was half asleep. And we're like, yeah, let's so just. So everybody And it was out. Jash's first play. And I was winning at that <laughs> point. Oh, my so. goodness. Anyways. Irrelevant. <laughs> Viticulture we played once and Max won. So nothing for yeah. our stats. Danielle will be on the verge of winning, and Max will completely sabotage her. Saboteur. Poor Danielle. Team Danielle. Hashtag Team Danielle. So, so um, you're you're stating your Team Danielle? No, I'm Team Max. Wow, ride or die. Max, you hear this? I'm Team Max, ride or die. But wow. I love Danielle. So wow. this wow. is a worker placement game where you are working on a vineyard, growing grapes, making wine, selling wine. It's a great game. Mm -hmm. We love this game. Mm -hmm. I do prefer to play the physical copy of this game. I do too. The BGA adaptation is great, yep. but for games like this, I too find really I find it really difficult to focus on yeah. BGA. If BGA but... has a game that's got too much strategy involved, I just I don't really enjoy yeah. it as much. Next up, we have we may as well talk about all of yep. these at the same time. We have the Silver Series from Desier Games. A love. A L-O-V-E. I would like to first start off by apologizing that we messed up the order in our Silver Series showdown. We messed up a bunch of we, things. We did? Yeah, also the flipper card does not come from... Listen, we're just talking. We're just saying words and then sometimes yeah. they're right and sometimes they're wrong. We're going to make mistakes, people. You're just going to have to deal with it. Exactly. So we played all of these games from the Silver Series. We recently released our Silver Series showdown. Make sure to link that video below. You should definitely go check it out if you love these games as much as we do. Yep. So we'll start off with Silver Amulet, which is the first game in the series. Oh boy. What? Silver Amulet we played twice in July, and of those two times, I won both. Mm -hmm. Next up is Silver Bullet, the love of our lives. So we played Silver Bullet a total of four times in That's July, ridiculous. which is super low. But I mean, when you think about it, it would have been typically all of these combined. That's fair. But we were trying to spread the love. Yeah. So four times in the month of July. Of those four times, I won three times and Jeff won once. You did have a good silver <laughs> run this month. Then comes Silver Coin because apparently they go A, B, C, D. We're dummies. Mm -hmm. Next up is Silver Coin, and we played Silver Coin twice. Jeff won once, and I won once. Asterisk. Why was that an asterisk? That's the one that I like. That's you such win. B. You didn't. Next one, and the last one, Ugh. is Silver Dagger. We played this twice, and once again, I won once, and Jeff won once. I would also like to mention that of our created ultimate deck, we played twice, and I won both times. Yeah. But apparently those don't count. It's not a real game. Which is <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> So that is the Silver Series. I really don't know what else we can yeah. say about this. Uh, watch all of our videos, but mainly go watch the Silver Series Showdown. Yep. We go through each of the games, what we like about them, what we don't like about them. We rank them and we build our ultimate silver deck. We love the series. There's we something love in this sweater that is dinking with my shoulder and it's itching. Yeah, it could be. Next up, we have... God's Love Dinosaurs from Pandasaurus Games, designed by right there. Casper Laugh. That's a cool name. Casper Laugh. Mm. Lap. You need to put your glasses on. <laughs> Casper Lap. Okay. I was close. Anyways, God's Love Dinosaurs is a tile placement ecosystem game where yeah. you are spawning dinosaurs, but the dinosaurs need to be able to eat in order to survive. Yeah. Dinosaurs have to eat predators. Predators have to eat prey. That's kind of what the game is in a nutshell. It's super fun. I personally love yeah. this game. We've only ever played it at two. Mm -hmm. I'd be really interested to see how it plays at a higher player count. Yeah, I definitely want to. But it's very, very cute, and I enjoy it very, yeah. very much. The predators have unique movement abilities to eat the prey, which generate new predators for then your dinosaurs to move around and eat. And if your dinosaurs can't eat, they die. Yep. And that's how the dinosaurs really did die. Yep. They ran out of tigers to eat. The dinosaurs eat tigers and eagles only. Yes. <laughs> Played this once and I won. You're very good at that game. That is a very tight game though. Every time you play that game, you are going to win by like less than five points. But it's a great game. Great game. Yeah. Loves it. Next, we're rolling into the games that we played during board game weekend. So starting off with Azul. All right, we have next up Azul, which is by Next Move and designed by Michael Kiesling. I'll never forget that now. It's you have old. a factory floor, you're placing tiles, mm -hmm. building out this beautiful little mosaic. Yeah, it's an abstract game. And scoring points based off of certain kind of end game triggers as mm -hmm. well as 
filling out this factory floor with tiles. So we have now played it at two players, three players, and four players, and still two players I don't, is our preference. I don't ever really want to play this game above two. This we played once with Jason and Acacia during board game weekend, yep. and I won this one, so. How do you have this ability to Put it to, on like, the board. You just make a statement, but it sounds so braggy. I am bragging, I won. Yeah. Okay, next up, is a personal favorite for both of us that we played during board game weekend. Camel up! Camel up! Next camel up is Camel Second up edition. From Agerspiel, designed by Nju de Stefan Bogan. Stefan Bogan, right? Stefan Bogan! Camel Up is a racing bidding game where you are racing camels who can camel up, they can climb up on top of each other, it's and so you're good. bidding on which camel you think will cross the finish line first. We played this, like I said, during our board game weekend, so if you'd like to see some gameplay of the games we're mentioning during board game weekend, you can go and watch that video and there's clips of us playing them. We love Camel Up. This is our yep. favorite like party game, even though it's technically not a party game. And if you do watch that board game weekend video, you're gonna hear us yell Camel Up at least like 20 times. Yeah, it's yeah, just, it's this so is just chaotic pure fun, and, yeah. this game. Yeah. So we played this once and Jason won. <laughs> So neither of us got the W on that one. Jason won. So I love this game Lame. so much. And we played that game at three players, four players, and five players, I yeah. think. Fun, no it's matter just what. Fun. It's a minimum of three. I wish that you could play it at two, but you can't. Right? Next up, we have Sheepy Time, designed by Neil Kimball, and that is brought to you by AEG. AEG. Push your luck race game, and you are... You sleep sheep. You're counting sheep as you sleep, and you're just kind of racing around this track as many times as you can. So each time you jump over the fence, you have to decide if you're going to keep going or stop and wake up. That's the push your luck element. Wake up, and there's a nightmare on the board that's chasing you around this board. This game is super fun. We played it once, and Jeff won. Jeff is very good at this game. I have never won this game. It's infuriating. I, I do love, it. love it's so much fun. Time. Next up for Board Game Weekend, we played Horrified, which we don't have a copy of, but that is from Ravensburger and designed by Prospero Hall. Mm -hmm. Is that a person? I don't know. No, it's not. It's not a person. Prospero Hall does a lot of the movie-based like IP games, games, and yeah. the designs are always amazing. Yeah. Horrified, beautiful game. Ugh. Stunning, Jason. Jason and Jamie always talk about how beautiful this game is, it and is I'm just beautiful. like, it's okay. It's not beautiful. Like, Ugh. anyways, there is a new version of Horrified coming out. It's Horrified American, American Monsters. Monsters. America so, Monsters. I am very excited for that, and I know Jason. I'm is not. Too. We played this during board game weekend, and unfortunately, we did not win. This is a cooperative game where you're trying to overcome the monsters. We played with Frankenstein and Frankenstein's Bride. We played with uh, the Swamp Creature yeah, and, Dracula. and Dracula. So there were a lot of monsters on the board. Before and we played, we were like one turn away from winning. Pretty before much. we played, Jason was like, "Let's make it difficult. Let's make this difficult." And it didn't work out. Didn't work out. And then we gave him a hard time afterwards. Mm -hmm. I don't mind horrified. I, I don't love mind it. it. I really like it a lot. I think it's a really good. It's a good co-op game. Next up during board game weekend, we played another favorite from AEG, and that is Cubitos, and I believe this is by John Declare. It is by John. Don't Declare. need to look that one up. I do declare. I do declare. There have been a lot of murders Since in Savannah. Savannah. So Cubitos is another racing game. If you guys watch our videos, you know that this is my favorite game mechanic. I love, I love Cubitos. Mm -hmm. Basically, you are rolling dice that give you different powers, movements, coins, all of this stuff around a track. Yep. And you're buying different cards to buy different, or you're buying different dice, dice throughout yeah. the game. Rolling, pushing your luck, and racing. And it is fun the theme is fun every time we play this what is the theme fun okay apparently you're in this like cube world like cube land okay. where all of the habitants are shaped oh, like cool. a cube i don't think and i ever knew that they're all at a race and that's why you have like a fan zone oh. and these are the stands and these are all the people watching what that's yeah neat. It's just so cool. It's so fun. So we played this once and I did win. I am very good at this game. I'm very, very fast. I'm very good so at sleepy. racing games. I love Cubitos the most because of the high replayability. You can play this game in so many different ways given the fact that there's so many different tracks and so many different ways for the dice to work. Next up Next from up. Stonemeyer Games and designed by Jamie Stegmeyer, one of our favorites. Mm -hmm. An old favorite. 
We love Scythe. I believe Jason won this. Uh, yeah, we played this once during Board Game Weekend, and Jason did win. I completely forgot. I honestly thought I'd won this. And I forgot think how scoring worked at the end, because I also thought I was I going really to win. thought I was going to win. And, you know, people kind of misinterpret this as a you know, a battle game. You don't have to battle in this game. I would say it's more area control than anything and resource collection. And then you're just trying to build out your your little player mat and maximize your scoring points. I'm currently painting the minis. Excited for that. Yep. Great game. Great game. We love Scythe. It's yeah. it's one of those ones that we didn't play it for years and you yeah, just I want to play it. back. I want to play it more now. I've mentioned a million times, if you haven't played the Rise of Fenris campaign extension to this, yes, you need to because it's one of my favorite gaming experiences. So that's Scythe, like I mentioned, Jason Wood. Scythe. Scythe. Whenever. Next game that we played during Board Game Weekend was Dune Imperium, and this time, instead of playing it for four hours, we played it for a reasonable hour and a half, which mm -hmm. is exactly what the box said. We now played it at three players and four players. Mm -hmm. This is a worker placement deck building game, much like Arnak, but with the Dune theme. Mm -hmm. But the biggest difference I noticed between three and four players was there was less less fighting in the four player one which is weird which is i think weird. that was just the way that we played it yeah it might have been i, I think i, I was taking it at strategy, three but i, I didn't really it find just been my strategy i didn't find any discernible difference i just my strategy changed based off of what would i was dealt you're yeah. right though yeah there wasn't as many people battling i liked fight in game so we played this once and jason won but it was a very very close game between jason jeff and acacia mm -hmm. I was not in the running to win at all. <laughs> I, I got card hosed. I needed one more thing and I would have won. Yeah. That's how tight that game is though. It's Jeff's opinion may have changed between mm -hmm. Dune and Arnak. So you're leaning more. And we'll talk maybe about Arnak a little bit later. I don't know. Maybe we will. Maybe we won't. <laughs> maybe we should talk about this when we get to Arnak. Yeah. But if we, I mean, did we play? Or sorry. Uh, Who knows if we even played Maybe it? we'll talk about this. In Anyways, we played this once and Jason won. Yeah. And it was nice to play with the, the real setup. And not the one yeah, that the, took us five hours. With the actual that. correct amount of conflict cards. Precisely. Yeah. Next game that we played during Board Game Weekend was Haunted Mansion. Or sorry, I should say Disney's The Haunted Mansion Call of the Spirits mm -hmm. game from Funko Games designed by Prospero Hall, of course. So this game we played, like I said, during Board Game Weekend. We've now played this at two players and four players. Mm -hmm. Definitely better at four players. 100%. It just, yeah, it's it doesn't work very well as a two-player game. But basically, mm. you have a bunch of rooms. You've got ghosts, the hitchhiking ghosts moving through the rooms, yeah. ghosts populating. And this is really, at the end of the day, it's a set collection game. Yeah. So you're just trying to collect different types or the same of the certain type of ghosts to score points for the end of the game. Yeah. The theme is amazing. I love the theme. I love Disney. Haunted Mansion beautiful. is my favorite ride at Disney. The gameplay itself is... Fine. I it's not a game that I'm like always eager to pull out. You're playing this if you want to have like a thematic like Disney yep. Day or if you're watching some Disney movies and yeah. you want to play a Disney game. It's and the art is just stunning. And yep. like I even said to Jeff, I don't even care if I don't like these games. Well it's not even that you don't like it, but No, I do like it. Mm. Yeah. But I don't like love this game. Yeah. But I want to collect all of the Disney yeah. games. Anyways, we played this once and I did win. But if you watch our board game weekend video I was like, I don't know what was going on when we were playing this game, but my brain was like pure mush. So mm -hmm. next up I. from Stonemeyer Games with Bezier Games mm -hmm. and designed by Ben Rossett and Matthew O'Malley. Between Two Castles of Mad King Ludwig. Which we also played during Board Game Weekend. We're going to do the review of this game coming up, so I'm not going to say too much about it. You are building out a castle. You have people around you, and you're sharing castles between the players. This is a semi-co-op game, which is what makes it unique. Yeah. And we've now played this game at three players and at four players. We still need to play it at two before we review it. Very curious to know how that's An going to work. Autumn up? Person, I think maybe? so. We'll let you guys know in our review, which should possibly be coming this week, next week at the very latest. Mm -hmm. So we played this twice. We did play this during Board Game Weekend, and then we played it again last night with Zach. And of those two times, I did win both of those times mm -hmm. because I am good at puzzling, which is kind of like what this game really is at the end of the day. It's a bit of a, it's a very thinky puzzly okay. game. We'll have more on this coming soon, but we did play this twice at two and three players. Yep. So. Stay tuned, peeps. Next up. This game is The Initiative. It is from Unexpected Games and Asmodee Canada. 
Asmodee Canada did send us this game for review, and I should say Stonemeyer sent us Tween Two Castles for review as well. We played this during Board Game Weekend, and we've played this many a time since then. So we've played both at four players and two players. Basically, this is a code-breaking game. Yep. And I love it, but that's a spoiler, but but I do. Anyways, we've played so far eight of the 15 missions. Yep. So we are more than yes. halfway. <laughs> Math, <laughs> math, brain, hard. Jamie. We are excited to continue on with this, and we will have a full review coming for you guys. Yep. And trying to be as unspoilery as possible. It will be difficult, but this yes, game is... it is very good. I, I love no, it. no harm in telling you guys that we. we... Love it. It's so good. We're like it's, I game. just think about it all the time. And I don't know if this is a spoiler. It's not a spoiler of the game, but maybe for our review. But Jeff is like a secret code breaker that we never knew. And if it weren't for him, I don't think I'd be getting through any of the missions. Yeah. Anyways, it's just a ton yeah. of fun. Love that game. Loves it. All right. Next up from AEG and designed John by John D. Clare. I'll buy all of his games. Space Space. Space Space. Space Space. Space Space is a big hit here. Um, you Love are it. rolling dice and taking actions based on the, your die result. So you'll have a bunch of ships in front of you and each ship is designated by a die mm -hmm. number and then you will roll and you're taking an action based off what you've rolled. So you can either take the combination of the two dice or each one individually. The benefit of this game or the beauty of this game, sorry, everyone's taking actions on every turn. So when you roll a dice, if you have certain slotted cards, you are also taking actions based off someone else's die result. So very it's very little downtime. Very, there's no downtime. And yep. we played this twice in the month of July. And we played this once with Jason during board game weekend. Yep. And we played it once with Jeff's friends, or I guess our friends, Dan Washburn and Dan Sequeira, the two Dans. So what I will say is we've now played this game at two players, three players, and four players. Does it go up? Two. So we haven't played it with five yet, but two, mm -hmm. three, and four, it plays exactly the same no matter the player count. The enjoyment level always stays high for us. Yep. And Jason really did enjoy this one. And yep. I think the beauty of this game is we did introduce it to Jeff's friends. to yep. friends, And so to the to Daniels. Dan's. They are not board gamers. They were able to pick on, up on this pretty good. Yeah, so, I think Dan Sequeira picked it up a bit quicker than Dan Washburn. But focused on as well. Um, I, <laughs> I believe after the fact, they both were like, yeah, I want to play that again. Yeah, I mean, we just, we love this game. I yeah. I love it. I yeah. love it. Space Space is great. Space Space. Next up, we played Downforce from Restoration Games. We played this a total of two times on Board Game Arena. Yeah, we don't own this. We don't own this, but we do have it on order. We do. So if it happens to come during August and September, it doesn't mm -hmm. count towards no buy August and September. We played this once with our friends over at Table Knots and then once just with the two of us. Mm -hmm. And of those two times, oh, I didn't say who won Space Base. Jeff won Space Base both times. How convenient that I forgot to mention Did I? It. You did, yeah. So Downforce, Jeff won once and Jash won once. These would be the first two times that I've ever lost down fours. Yes. Very infuriating. I love that game so much. Basically, you're Formula One drivers, yep. you're bidding on cars that you own, and then you're racing and you're bidding at certain points in the game to see which car you think will win. Yep. Uh, even if it's not your car, you can bid on it, you get yep. points, all that stuff. It's a ton you have of fun. A, you have a hand of, of cards which allow you to m move cars a yep. certain distance along the track. And in most cases, all, the car will have each car on it. Yeah. So you're moving opponent's cars, your cars, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So fun. Yeah, we very love good. It. And it does play really well on BGA. It I does play it really, really well, does. Yeah. Next, another one that we don't have a physical copy of is Abandon All Artichokes from Game Right. We played this one a total of five times. And of those five times, once was with our friends at Table Knots on yep. BGA, and two of those those times we played physical copy at the boardroom game cafe yeah. and the rest we just played with our the one other time the one other time no two other times no sorry math, math. <laughs> Abandon All Artichokes is a simple card game where you have you start off with a hand of artichokes and you're trying to trash all of those artichokes by gathering different vegetables that allow you to discard your artichokes. Poor little guys. Get your artichokes. This is a very adorable game that I enjoy a heck of a lot. You're so good at it. We played five times. I won four times and Jeff won once. That doesn't once. surprise me at all. I really like this game. Though. I always feel I mean, like I'm about to win and 
I never, ever, ever do. This game really is all about luck, though. It is. Yeah, Honestly, that's fair. like, I don't think you could really have a great strategy for this game. No, it's I mean, the, it depends on the cards, on what cards that come, come up, up and yeah. all that stuff. We really enjoy it. I would like to buy it at some point yep. for travel purposes because it would be a fabulous travel game. Next game that we played at the Boardroom Game Cafe, because we did go one day in July, mm. and that was Herbaceous. And Herbaceous is from Pencil First Games. There is a Herbaceous Pocket Edition coming, which I think I would actually really like to buy. But Herbaceous is, it's a card game where you have Definitely your private like garden it. and you have a public garden and you're trying to score objectives based on your pots that you have in front of you. Yeah. You can use your garden or the private garden. Yeah, it's 100% set collection. Yeah, it is. I really liked it. it. I think it's not one that I would run out to buy, but I would run out to buy the pocket version because I do think it would be a great travel game. But that's just me. And I did win, so. <laughs> I wasn't super into it. Like, there's games that, that do that mechanic better, in my opinion. I, I just, just, I liked the public garden and private garden aspect of it. Next game that we played at the Boardroom Game Cafe when we were there was Five Tribes. Uh, first time for us ever playing it. Mm -hmm. How would you describe this game? I have it's, no idea. I don't even know how I would describe it either. Is it kind of like area control? Kind of. Somewhat. It's yeah. like area control, a bit point salad y yep. because you're gaining a lot of points. You're just trying to get, yeah, you're just trying to make uh, optimize your turn and score the most points. Moving, you're picking up meeples and you're moving them and then you're ending on a space. You're taking all the meeples of one color and you're either claiming that space or you're taking the action that's on that space. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of just how the turns go. You yep. bid for your turn order. Yeah, you score a lot of points. We've only played it once, so and it was kind of like a learning game for us. But she's saying that, this to downplay the fact that I won. No, I'm not. You were way better at it than I was. Jeff picked up on the strategy very quickly, where I was like, I don't, I don't see how you're seeing these things. But mm. eventually, I did get it, and I heard a lot of people saying this is the kind of game that after you play it the first time, you're like, I want to play that again. Mm -hmm. And I do feel that way. I I really liked it. I really liked it yep. too. The I definitely theme, think that's a game I would pick up at some point. Yeah, yeah. the theme is... The theme is Soup Sketch. Yeah. Played the, uh, the original old, old version, unfortunately. Old version, which yeah. has like slave cards and stuff, which is not Yeah, great. that was a bit of a struggle. Yeah, so, you know, you're kind of playing this game. You're like, I feel icky playing this game. So mm -hmm. they've changed the slave cards to Fakirs. I don't know what a Fakir is, Nor but you already know what the original game is, so you know what that card was to begin with. And yeah. anyway, so the theme is trash, but the mechanics of the game were a lot of fun. Yeah. We played this once and Jeff won. Yes. It was a win that he desperately I really needed that day. <laughs> like, yeah, I had a bad day at Boardroom, Boardroom Cafe. Game Cafe. Yeah. Again, like those little tiny card games, I've got they're, no chance. They're my they're my speed more so. Got no chance on those. Next up, we played Die we played Die of the Dead from Radical Why are you so rude? Well, your arm's always in the well, way. Well, just ask me politely to move it. You don't have to say move. Move your arm. So this is Die of the Dead from Radical 8, designed by James Allen and Mark Stockton Pitt. You should know that by now. This game was sent to us for review from Radical 8, and we have posted our review of this game. So if you want some in-depth information on this stunning, it's so stunning beautiful. game, definitely go and check out that video. It's dice rolling, luck getting based. up luck based. You're getting your little souls up to the land of the living. It's Dia de Muertos themed, mm -hmm. which is the day of the dead. So you're shaking caskets that have dice in them and moving them upstairs to the land of the living. You can it's, go watch that. You could definitely go watch that for more information. We played this twice, both with the beginner and the advanced versions, mm -hmm. and Jeff won both of those times, so that was fun. We enjoyed this game way more than we thought we would. Yeah. I knew this game was going to be beautiful, which it is. It's beautiful. This game is beautiful. But it was also a lot of fun, and we think that this would be a great party game. I do think it'd be a great party game, and it'd be super chaotic at a higher player count, in a which good way. would be awesome. But overall, we loved it. Yeah, we won't good. say too much because you can go and watch our yep, video. Yeah, go watch the review. We played Nidavalier. 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 We had to look up how to say it. But, anyways, I'm calling it Nidavalier. Set collection. You're collecting mm -hmm. dwarves from taverns. 
Tell us how you feel about it, Jack. We've only played this on BGA. I don't like... I feel like I like the game better in person. I have some block when I play BGA games. Mm -hmm. When it comes to, like, BGA games that require some heavier strategy... Some thinking. Like, outside of, like, a King Domino or Draftosaurus, I just can't do it. Like, I don't pay... My brain is in a million places. First time that we played this game, we just did... We threw ourselves in and we were clicking around and just trying yeah. to figure it out. We wanted to play this game for forever with Max. Max loves this Max game. Max loves this game. And Jack... Jeff is less keen on it and I'm somewhere in between. I do think I'd like it more in person, but yeah, it's set collection. You're bidding on different taverns full of dwarves and then mm -hmm. you're picking dwarves to put in your little pool and each dwarf type scores differently. And it sounds like super basic, but there is a lot of strategy. There's a lot of strategy that can go with into how it. all the cards score. Like it's just, there's a lot of strategy in this game. So we played this a total of seven times in July. Of those seven times, we played six with the Table Nuts crew, mainly just with Max and I think once or twice with Jash and mm. Max. Of those seven times, Jeff won once, I won twice, and Max won four times. So Max crush in this game. It's okay. I like it, Max. Ride or die. Just, Max loves it. I know he does. He doesn't just like Every it. time we're like, you want to play a game? It. He's like, Nineveh And Daniel And Daniel's like, it. no. <laughs> and I'm like, no. Ride or die. Okay, next one. Next up we have from Aaliyah, designed by Stefan Feld. Stephen Castles Feld. of Stefan Feld. What did I say? Stefan. Stefan. From like uh, Family Matters. Family Matters. Yeah. Castles of Burgundy. This is a incredibly thematic. <laughs> uh, a horribly beautiful game. I don't even know. Like, what is it? A tile placement. It's tile placement. Dice. Like, Manipulation. Ice manipulation. There's a lot going on. There's here. a lot going on. Yeah. We play. Have now played this at two and three player. Have we played it at four? No. I this I don't want to play this at uh, anything other than other two. than two. This is a fantastic two player game. I don't want to play it at three or four or five or whatever we, you play it at. We no. played it on BGA and it was just you, me, and Max, right? Yeah. Okay, so it was just the three of us, and the BGA adaptation, I think, is fine. Yeah. Actually, the one thing that the BGA version does solve is the iconography, because yes. you can just hover over something, and it's like, this is what it means. Which is a big problem with the... Which is a huge uh, problem with the physical With game. this bad boy, and it's crappy, even though it's been an improved yeah. rule book. I didn't really notice a huge difference between two and three players, honestly. I th I want, I'd be interested to see what it was like in person with three players. I just liked it at two more. I don't I can love this. Game. I don't know why. It's very good. I yeah. love Castles of Burgundy. It's I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why I do, but it's, it's so ugly. It's it's a phenomenal game. Yeah, we played this just once, like I said, with Max, and I won, and yeah. I love it. I yeah, she win. sandbagged us a bit. We. <laughs> I think no, not. I did. Sorry, it's probably the wrong term. But you were. You I were, was. I was uh, not winning, but I had something in my back pocket yeah, that I was ready to you, pull out last minute. At the minute. very end of the game, and you ended up winning, and Max was like, "What?" Because I That's think he was. He was preparing to win, so. He was yeah. preparing to win. Next one we played was the Jungle Cruise Adventure Game from Ravensburger, designed by, of course, Prospero Hall. Who mm -hmm. else? None other. Jungle Cruise is obviously a Disney-themed game based on Jungle Cruise the Ride, which is a ride that I love. I love all Disney rides. And the movie just came out. And the movie just came out with The Rock. We did play this one, and Jeff won. He cruised right on by me. I did. Overall, this is a great kids game. Kids game. <laughs> the theme is fantastic. It is very simple. If yep. it had a bit more complexity, I think I would like it a bit more. But like just exactly what I said about Haunted Mansion, I am buying these games just to have them regardless of whether or not they're a love for me. Yep. I liked it. I did really like it. But... It's just not a lot. You're just traveling through the jungle from point A to point B, basically. Dropping off passengers. You're picking cargo. up and dropping off passengers and cargo. And, you know, there's a hidden element to what scores the most at the end of the game. So certain passengers will score more at the end of the game. And you don't know that information. You Until can go end. through and collect information clues. and collect clues to figure that out. It's very... Very lightweight. basic. Very lightweight. But it reminds me of the games I used to play as a kid. Yeah. Really. This would be great to play with kids. And yep. like the theme, you're playing this for the theme. Yep. The theme was awesome. Yep. And all of the cards have like Jungle Cruise-esque jokes on yeah. them. Next up we have from 
Czech Games Edition, Min and Elwin. I don't know what that means. I'm assuming Those designed by Min and Elwin. Lost mm -hmm. Ruins of Arnak, which is worker placement deck building. deck building, as I'm sure you're all aware at this point because everyone's talking about this game. Maybe mention who won first and then I'll talk sure. about it. Sure. So we played Lost Ruins of Arnak once and we played this at Lancelot Games with Lance himself, the man, the myth, the legend, and Zach. And Lance won this game. Mm -hmm. It was probably the most fun I've had playing a game in forever because yeah, of his was, childlike joy he playing was the game. Super giddy playing this game. And yeah, I remember sitting there at one point and be like, this is This is why this is why we wanted to do this. Like yeah. to have these moments. Again, you're kind of Indiana Jones, I guess, and you're digging for sites and if you dig a new site it produces a monster and you have to overcome that monster and there's mm -hmm. a research track and yep. Dune Imperium and Lost Ruins of Arnak are kind of compared mm -hmm. hand in hand yeah, these they came days. Out around the same time, same, same mechanics. mechanics, different theme. So I was flip-flopping. I was like, no, I like Lost Ruins of Arnak more than Dune, but it was based off limited plays. I played Dune Imperium and I was like, okay, I like this a lot. I think I like this more than Arnak, but I need to play Arnak one more time to be sure. And then we played Arnak again and I was like, yes. I prefer Dune Imperium for two reasons. One, I find it's tighter, the games are closer, the strategy matters more. And two, I prefer the theme because I like the books. I find in Arnak there's more chaos. I prefer Dune Imperium at this point. I prefer Arnak. I like the chaos. I prefer the theme. And I like how in Arnak you have no idea who's going to win until the end. I like that. I way prefer that. I... In Dune, you have the score tracker, so you can. I could very clearly see in Dune, I had no chance in hell at winning. Mm -hmm. In Arnak, I was like, I don't think I'm going to win. And I, well, I, was, no, I came Lance, in second. Lance, Lance. Took, Lance ran away with it, but I came yeah. in second. So, like, I just, I we prefer that. I, I find it can be discouraging when you can see yourself at the bottom of the victory point tracker when you're like, oh, I really don't have a chance of winning. Where in an Arnak, you're just like, that could, I have no that, idea. That could happen in Arnak, too, though. If you're too far behind. How would you know? I prefer Arnak. Jeff prefers Dune. They're both great games. Next up, we played a game we've never played before yeah. in BGA. And we played this with the whole Table Knots crew. So everybody, Josh, Danielle, Max, and Doolin. And that game is called No Thanks. We played No Thanks twice. And of those two times, Danielle won once and Jeff won once. Mm -hmm. Basically, this game, you are choosing to either take a card or leave a chip mm -hmm. so that you don't have to take a card because if you take a card those points count against you yep. essentially so if you take a card you want to take a low card instead of a high card we played this game first and i was like this game kind of sucks and is weird we played it again and then i was like okay now i actually get the game mm -hmm. And I do think that this is a game that I would like to have for when we have people like Jeff's parents over. Yeah. That would be an ideal game to yeah, play with very them. very simple. So I, at first, I hated it. And then after a while, I kind of came around. And I think that I might like it. Yeah, we kind of like stumbled through it. We had never played it before. And then we once we kind of figured around. out how it worked, it was okay. So we played that twice. And then we played another game on BGA with our Table Knots friends. Once mm -hmm. again, the whole crew. We played Coup. Who is from Indie Boards and cards and is designed by Ricky Tata. 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 We played this twice. Doolin won both times. This is probably the first time ever that we have played Coup. We're no nobody lied. No no liars very among odd. us. We were all telling the truth the whole time, which makes it a very interesting <laughs> gaming experience. Coup I definitely prefer in person. Yeah. 100%, I, I, over I the honestly BGA would be completely fine never playing Coup on BGA again. Yeah, and in Coup you have two cards. Each each card has a special ability and you can choose to lie or to tell the truth. Yeah. As an example, with the Duke card, you can take three coins from, from the supply. The supply. Yeah. So you would say, as the Duke, I'm taking three coins. And then everybody has an opportunity to challenge you on that. Yeah. If they challenge you and they are right, you lose a card. If they challenge you and they are wrong, they lose a card. And then you're just basically eliminating people. Once your cards are gone, you're out of the game. Whoever is left with cards by the end wins. It's a simple yeah, lying game of game. lying. All right, next up from Brother Wise Games, one of our faves, we have Overboss. Aaron Mesburn and Kevin Russ. Overboss is one of our favorite games. Mm -hmm. It is a tile placement building out your dungeon. Tile drafting, tile placement. Yeah, sorry, tile drafting, tile, tile placement. And you're just building out your dungeon um, and to optimize that dungeon with the best kind of like 
bosses and dungeon types and it's kind of like set collection-y and then you just score points at the end of the game it's yep. beautiful the artwork in this might be my favorite of any game we've played it's the best art of it's all very the art. snes link to the past we played this game once just last night and jeff won and this is like the first time he's won in that's, a very long time that's okay i was gonna say i thought you were gonna you say it was the first time i've played or won and that's not true the oh yeah i get this one out played in the month of july was res arcana from Sandcastle Games designed by Tom Lehman. This is our first time playing the physical copy of this game. Jeff has played this on BGA I just learned with this. some friends of the Discord. Yep. Kyle, Jeremy, Jer, Kyle, and Jake. And Jake. Jackpot. This was my first experience with it in person. Your first experience in person. I will let Jeff talk about it because I know that he's dying to talk about this game. No, it's okay. Jeff did win. so yep. And we played it with Zach, so we played it at three. Res Arcana, I played on BGA with Jake, Jeremy, and Kyle. I kind of learned on my own and then played. And, you know, it was meant to be a learning experience. And it was. Jeremy was learning from Jake. And I was asking some questions. And in that BGA experience, I'm like, I really really like this game i had luckily bought it because our friends over at all you can board talked about it played on bga loved it played it in person loved it even more we haven't played it yet at just the two player which i think most people would argue is the best to play this game at it's a very very tight strategic engine builder i think is the best way to put it sure. it's basically a race to 10 points you can buy places of power you can buy monuments that increase your victory condition and increase your engine manipulation so you're just trying to optimize your engine the first points. person to 10 points wins i guess mm -hmm. but really love res arcana i really want to get it played just with jamie and i to see how that works it was fun it was a lot of fun i got swamped down with a bunch of dragons though mm -hmm. so i didn't win that's res arcana a love new it. favorite from jack freaking love it we have two games Games left. Let's go. We just played this last night. This is Gardens of Babylon, the deluxe edition by Stavros Polivio. So this is Zach's game. This is the first time we've ever played it. We played it with Zach. And basically this is very this unique. is a very unique game. So essentially what Area you're doing... Area control, I would say too, because... Sure. So you're yeah. placing out these... Maybe not. You're building out this city of Babylon. There's like waterfalls and staircases. Temple. Temple, whatever. And you've got your little worker people that are kind of climbing up this temple mm -hmm. or whatever it is. And they're planting seeds and the seeds can then cascade down the waterfalls. And that's how you score points is by having seeds all over the place. Now, when you cascade a seed, if somebody else's seed is in that pathway or whatever, you knock their seed out, mm -hmm. your seed replaces it. And that's kind of what the game is in a nutshell. It's very, very simple. I really liked it. It was very fun. Yeah. <laughs> I did win, which always helps when we play games. Yep. We did find that there were certain, we kept getting stuck in certain places. So we really didn't bump out as much. Yeah, seeds. I think. Uh, uh, we abandoned a few of our workers way too early, I think. Is I what think another play would be way more optimized because we just didn't know the strategy. So yeah. we we kind of get stuck down further in the temple and there's have to have stairs to go up and you have to have archways to go Over. perpendicular. You know, you can kind of get trapped and we yeah. weren't paying super attention to that. But it's really just a race to the top so that then you can cascade your colors yeah. down. I really liked it. Like I said, we played this for a first time and I won. So that's Gardens of Babylon. <laughs> and I've never heard anything about it before. I had not heard about it or read about it or knew anything about it until Zach put it on the table. Yeah. Awesome. Last game that we played in the month of July. This is a big ass box. This is Lords of Waterdeep, a board game from Dungeons and Dragons. Wizards of the Coast, I'm assuming. I'm assuming if it's Dungeons and Dragons, yeah. everything is upside down. Zach always has them upside down. <laughs> well, so do we now. It's like a trend. This is like a pretty basic worker placement game in yeah. the world of Dungeons and Dragons where you each have three workers. Eventually you do get four. You place them on different areas of the board. You get that benefit and you're trying to achieve quest cards by getting different workers. So this is like an in introductory level worker placement game. Mm -hmm. Jeff has been wanting to play this for a very long time. Yep. So I'm glad that we got to play it. I did really like it. I think this is the perfect game to introduce people to worker placement. I agree. I thought it was a lot of fun. Very, very simple, straightforward places that you can place workers. Yeah. <laughs> we played this once and Zach won this game. So those are all of the games that we played in July. That was a ton of games. Totals for the month of July. In July, Jeff won a total of 33 games and I won a total of 38 games. 
So that's a that's close for how many games you played. So I'm five close. You were killing to my me goal. for a while though. Yeah, I was at one point up by thirteen games, and I am very very mad that I lost that lead. And I'm not going to say anything else about it. Doesn't matter. She's trying to play it off like she let me win all of those games, which is I didn't ridiculous. let you win all of them. But she, I was starting to feel bad because Jeff wasn't having fun anymore. And we've talked about this in my confessions. I want Jeff to have fun. Well, I want you to have fun too. I'm not having fun now that I lost that big lead. Oh. Our year total is so far, I have won a total of 130 games and Jeff has won a total of 140 games. So there is a 10, a 10 game lead for Jeff. So there's that. Of So far of the year, I just have a few more stats that I thought were interesting. We've already played 112 different games mm -hmm. and 367 plays total. Team Jamie, we are starting to gain some momentum. We are starting to catch up and we will win. I need to avoid those little card games unless it's Fox in the Forest. If I avoid those, car those little card games and BGA, I need to stop playing on BGA. I lose Jesus so much Jesus. on BGA. Those are all of the games that we played in July. We would love to hear below about what games you played in July or if you played any of these games. What do you think about them? We would love to know. Good if luck. If you made it till now. Thank you. Thank you. It's, yeah, every month I'm like, oh my God, we played 36 games or 30, however many games we have to talk about all of these. Yeah, if you're interested in buying any of these games, a great place to start would be a friendly local gaming store. And for us here in Halifax, it is the Boardroom Game Cafe located down on... Barrington. Exactly. We like to go at least once a month. You know, you might see us there if yep. you're in the area. Who's to say? Yep. We'll leave all of their information right here. Here. As well as down below. Definitely go check them out if you're in the area. A few things to mention. We have a Discord. You should join us. We have a Patreon. You can join us if you would like. We have we have Instagram and Twitter, at Foster the People. Definitely follow us on there if you're interested. And of course, if you like what you see, please subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and all of that good stuff. Streamlining that outro. It's just too long. It's too many things. Everything you need to know is down below. Yes. Most importantly, subscribe and join us on Discord yes. because we, we love to chat. Well, that's all that we have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. We hope to see you again soon. And now we say goodbye. Goodbye. Later days. Later days. We did that at the exact same time. Royal promise. I feel like the camera's much lower than normal, but it's okay, right? I don't think so. Okay, are you looking at the screen or the camera? Camera. <laughs> Stop. Don't be gross. The screen's over here. I know. The lens is here. Yeah, I know. I see Stop your strategy. Stop looking. You took one of my turns for me, and I feel like you probably totally... I scored you like five points on that turn, actually. But what if it's not what I wanted? Well, oh, okay. you're just, just blind. I, like, I just couldn't see. Just ask me, because I can actually see the screen. How can you see? Well, you because your... I have contacts in, and I'm not choosing to purposely not see anything like you are. Okay.